Hi, my name is Michael Keener. I'm the, uh, the president of Greenwood Clean Energy. We manufacture high efficiency wood boilers. Uh, so rather than using oil, natural gas, or propane to heat your entire home and all your hot water, you use a naturally, locally available, sustainable fuel, wood. How do you define success? So defining success, aside from the strict economic considerations where making a lot of money and it flows to the bottom line makes everyone happy, um, it's something that is culturally distinct and actually you can look at it and say, I know what that looks like. It also has a positive momentum, not only in, the, in, the, in its business, but in, in where it's taking that business. Um, so it has a, a lot of ancillary benefits associated with it. To me, that's success. Where did your inspiration come from? Actually, you know what, we should probably ask that question again. Is that you're looking for something inspiring for Greenwood or inspiring for me personally? Okay. Um, the inspiration for me comes from, al it's, it's an altruistic view. It's a matter of, I get excited about businesses and Greenwood's one of those where you impact people's lives fundamentally. And we've got a product that is great for the environment, creates a significant economic impact inside that household. Um, again, reducing their energy bills by 70, 80 percent. And again, if you look at the studies, the biggest issue with marriage in America is basically finances. By solving this, we solve an, an energy problem, an environmental problem, and a financial problem at the very local level. How did you move from idea to something actually succeeding in the market? First, we have to break it into small, bite-sized chunks. When you look at starting a business, you can't just say, you know what, we're going to build a successful business, it's going to have $100 million in revenue. You've got to break it down and say, okay, what are my near-term milestones, and what am I going to do to achieve that? And I found that, again, especially with young companies, it's all about building credibility. I call them halos of credibility. I've got three or four entities that, that are much larger, much more successful that I can associate myself with that then pull me along into the marketplace. So the, the, the most difficult thing is not once something's moving. The hardest thing is to take something with a blank sheet of paper and to actually get the ball moving it into the marketplace. And for that, you need additional parties which actually can add mass and do work when you aren't. How did you organize your team? Uh, organizing a team is probably one of the most uh, important things you can do. For, uh, again, a young organization, there are more uh, things that need to get done than there are bodies you can put against them. So, you know, typically we line up nice and flat, everybody's empowered to make decisions. Um, we get together and we certainly uh, hash over some of the larger ones, but again, flat and empowered. If you could have, what would you have done differently? I would have brought in the finance guys earlier. <laughs> Actually, a, a mentor of mine, um, when I was leaving a, a large organization, said to me, Michael, the hardest thing you're ever going to face um, when you start a company is access to capital. He said, you've got more than enough charisma, drive, ideas, and follow through, but it's a matter of you need the money to make that happen. What makes a great entrepreneur? So makes a great entrepreneur. Um, actually, I had to make a list because the, it's, it's actually pretty extensive. Okay. Uh, much more so than I would have thought. Uh, first of all, you got to have drive and passion. I mean, I think that's integral to, to really doing the hard work when you don't want to. Um, second is the ability to motivate and inspire. Um, again, you know, the hardest thing is you know, you've got this vision and you've got to get other people to do that work when the pay isn't necessarily what it should be. Um, third is the ability to stay focused or to get focused and to stay focused. And those are two separate and distinct uh, activities. Uh, fourth is uh, the ability to be objective and to make adjustments. Okay, the plan that you started with is not the plan you're going to finish with. Um, and you got to have flexible talent. Again, in a young organization, I mentioned before, you've got more work, more things need to get done, and you've got bodies, and so everyone has to wear multiple hats. So having talent that is decent at multiple things is a good thing. Um, you've got to be able to say, you know what, it may not have been invented in this seat, but it's, if it's a good idea, we go with it. Um, and then finally, uh, the ability to attract and retain talent. It's a matter of, you know, uh, you're only as good as your team. If you think you've got it here, that's, uh, that's a problem. What role did education have in your success? Limited, and probably foundational, but limited. Um, we're going, oh, you know, I go to XYZ and learned, you know, something about engineering. Um, I found that it teaches you how to think. Um, again, I'm an 
engineer by training. And so that analytical, analytical approach towards solving a problem is very useful in my day to day. But the practical side of that education, not so much. Same thing with the MBA. It's a matter of, okay, it's great. It just gives you context so you can become that generalist that I talked about before that's needed. Um, but aside from that, uh, it's, it's limited impact. Uh, the thing that I would say is important that comes from education, especially uh, uh, graduate school and those types of things, are relationships. It's a matter of you meet bright people who are you know, making, moving and shaking, and again, you know what, you're going to call on them. So finally, what is the most important question we did not ask you and your answer? I'm not sure I can give you the most important question, but I can give you a question that you haven't asked that I think every entrepreneur needs to ask themselves, and that is, you know, how are you going to let go? And it's a matter of many entrepreneurs come in with a specialized skill that is very good toward a particular scale in an organization. Um, you can grow a business from you know, zero to 20 people to 10 million, million but at some point, your capacity to manage and lead that organization is going to be challenged. And it's at that moment you're going to say, to him, am, I, am I too proud and I can't step to the side and let someone take and run it? Or, you know, if, if that's indeed the case, um, uh, you, you refuse to step to the side, chances are you eliminate the growth of that organization.